We're on. Okay, it's good to be here. Welcome to each of you. Welcome to the ones that are you see and the ones you can't see. Whomever that may be. They can be angels. So my question for each and every one of you is this. Who's knocking on your door? Oh, yeah, that's good. God. God? Could it be the imitator at times? Yes. You think it's God. That happens a lot in a lot of lives. That's why Christians get led astray. And there's sound, they find a sound doctrine that backs up what they think is right. But they're wrong. Right. That's so sad. That's very sad. We need to be on target. We need to be in prayer with what the Lord is saying to hear, to hear Him right. and know us, the Lord. That's why I always say this: we need to know His voice, obey His voice, and be obedient to His voice. Amen. And that all. Happened, and I know you've heard this story, but perhaps well, in video land, whatever you want to call it, cyberspace, it hasn't really been proclaimed. But I'll never forget the time. It was on Memorial Day. When Judy came into the house and she said, Oh, Mark, we have four favorite koi fish. And they're about 12 inches long. Judy says, it's dead. I said, are you sure? She said, yeah, that stinks. <laughs> well, that's a good sign of death. <laughs> so I went out there, had the shovel, and I just started to scoop it up. So I said, I carried it away and buried it. I said, so I thought I was talking to myself when I said, where do I bury it? Tomatoes, plants, uh, and then loud and clearly, I heard the knock. The knock was the voice of Jesus. Amen. That voice says, don't bury the fish, clean it. And I knew he didn't want me to take the innards out. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a smelly fish. But the strange thing is, when I picked it up, I couldn't smell it any longer. And it had little sand, little gravelly things all over it, dried to the skin, the tree, uh, hemlock needles. So I carefully brushed it off, and I saw where the, the fins were dry, very dry. And, oh, got to turn it over. I did the other side, cleaned it. And I said, okay, Lord, I know what you're saying. You clean the dead and then you bury the dead. <laughs> he says, simply put it in the water. <laughs> uh, so me, probably you know me, I put it in the shallow end. I did not have faith to think that they should be alive. So I went to the house. Judy's brother and sister-in-law was there and they enjoyed the rest of the, yeah, part of the afternoon, a couple hours, three hours later. I thought, oh, I gotta put the shovel away. Went out there, shovel was there, <laughs> fish was gone. <laughs> I said, did the dog get the dead fish? <laughs> <laughs> then I saw the li lily pads kind of Thrashing a little bit, now it's found this same koi fish. It's kind of swimming sideways for a while, and then straightened out. I go, and, and I, we as Christians, we expect miracles, and I have many of them in my life, but this tops all of them. So he, uh, so I said, okay, Lord, thank you, praise you, and so I. Just uh, kind of choked up, and I said, "So, 
what is the what are you showing me? What does this mean? He, he invites our questions, right? Yeah. Don't forget to question the Lord. So, because he'll set you straight. <laughs> and so I heard the knock on the door. He says, Look, and I look, and the whole sky was just pitch black. And I thought, oh, a vision. It's just, I'm so matter of fact, I can't even believe myself. <laughs> but I saw these pinpoints, like billions of stars in the sky. And he says, these are the ones I want them to hear my voice. Amen. Yes. So there's so many. The word has got to go out. And the word has been going out across this land. And we are seeing a great awakening. And it's only going to get better. There's a scripture. If I can remember where I put it. Uh, oh, it's in Revelation 3. It says 3, 19. Those whom I love I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him, and he with me. I felt like, that's what I felt like. I invited him in, and I was able to eat with him so to speak, because it was a close communion with him. That's what we need. Is there a close, very close, and only then will we ever be happy in our walk with the Lord. We're not going to be sorrowless Christians. Uh, uh, you know, we're not going to be at each other's throats. We're just going to be with him in the joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And we will grow. We'll be stronger. We need to always be reminded. One another. Pray for one another. And we're God's chosen people. We're holy, dearly loved. We want to be clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bearing with each other and forgiving whatever grievance you may have against Gene or others. So, uh, I love to personalize the Bible. And yeah, we all need to be forgiven for something if we really search our hearts find out what it is. So, I'm going to sidetrack again. I think I can tie it in with the rest of what I'm saying. And this is going to be a very short morning for us. I'm not going to hold it very long. i got so many things that are updating in those now. So there's a when we were ministering in Alaska, what year was that? 2009. In 09, we were there for three months. They wanted us to be, we were there for the summer. They wanted us to stay for the winter. And I had a wedding to do, I promised some people. I married on the beach, is what they wanted. And I thought, man, I'd love to stay longer. But we're, we're gone. And we didn't leave. But the last day there, Tabitha, one of our church members, five years old, and she comes up to me and she says, Pastor Gene. I says, What? She says, 
I'm so sad that you're leaving. And I have to say goodbye, but I'm so sad. And then she, from that to total illuminated face with joy. And she says, but that's all right. Because I have Jesus in my heart. Amen. <laughs> and the point being today, never forget that. We have Jesus in our heart. Yes. Friends will leave us. Friends will forsake us. Friends will do wrong against us. Believe me. I've had a lot of friends in my life, and some of them have done just what I said. So, Christ Jesus is in your heart. He'll never leave you. And he can never, ever save you. Why do I say that? It's in the Bible. My Bible tells me so. He never will, never, he can't. It's a promise. Along with, probably I understand about 5,000 or more promises in God. So there's a, um, he wants to speak all, speak to all of us. And uh, back to the fish detail, Willie came up with a new nickname for me. Big fish. Big fish. Big fish. <laughs> I've got big fish before. Uh, so, I woke up in the middle of the night and it was a knock, but it was his voice, loud. What, Lord? And he says, your obedience will bring forth phenomenal results. Absolutely. Keep that in mind. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Oh, yeah. So we need to keep Keep at it. We need to keep in check. We need to keep our, ourselves in check all the time. And I'm not here to put anyone down. I'm not here to uh, discourage you. I'm, hey, I'm here to encourage. Yes. That's all. All of us. Yes. That includes you guys out there. So, God is good. There's so much more. I'd like to talk about, but I did promise it would be short. So did anybody get anything out of this? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So the thing about this, yeah, why Jesus? First time back in the pulpit for four years. And I thought I was dying. You were dying. <laughs> I was dying. <laughs> dying on the vine. And uh I'm happy to stay on here. Praise God. But Praise we'll God. Look at it slowly. I heard Jimmy Swigert say this morning that uh, he went to a doctor with a problem. And he said, Doctor, what do you suppose it is? The doctor didn't even look up. He just says, You're old. <laughs> 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 and then he went to another doctor, the same thing. And then just the third time he went to the doctor, he, I, I don't see like I need I need help. What's what's going on? And this guy, same thing. You're growing old. <laughs> so I'm growing old, but I'll tell you what, there's a pastor down the road of these next town. He has uh Retired at 96 years of age. <laughs> so, I don't know, I might have 16, 15 more years. Absolutely. But I've had a family of relatives that don't go back to preaching. <laughs> but more importantly, I say, Lord, what do you want? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And uh, when but I know that he wants us to open the doors to our heart. And we do. 
things, right things will happen. Right. If we have a, a knock, test the spirits. Maybe it's not God this time. Especially if, if it's a little stinky, if it's like a sinful thing. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. So we can step aside from sin. And we can also say, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sin. We can say, Lord Jesus, I want more of you in my life. Lord Jesus, perhaps I'm not saved. Say that wonderful sinner's prayer. Come into my heart to save me from sin. Forgive me all my sins. It's just so simple. The thief on the cross was saved, but he wasn't baptized. Oh, by the way, this is Pentecost Sunday, mm -hmm. and I could have spent hours talking about this, but somebody already has. So I decided not to, for sure. Anyway, that's all for today.